So as many of you know, on Friday, Rashida Tlaib at a Bernie rally in Iowa, she led the crowd <laughs> as they booed Hillary Clinton. You know, they uh, the moderator brought up Hillary Clinton. The crowd proceeded to boo. And then the moderator said, no, no, we're not going to do that. Rashida Tlaib, however, she had a different reaction. Take a look. This week when someone by the name of Hillary Clinton said that nobody, we're not going to boo. We're not going to boo. We're classy here. No, we're no, classy. I'll boo. Boo. I, you all know I can't be quiet. No, we're going to boo. That's all right. The haters, the haters will shut up on Monday when we win. There we go. I was going to say a hater. That was absolutely phenomenal. And immediately when I saw this, I just thought, man, my love for Rashida Tlaib, I didn't think it could grow anymore, but she's amazing. But the thing that happened next, predictably, was, you know, the mass pearl clutching from the establishment. And I was so outraged by this myself, seeing their outrage, that I wanted to make a video. But um, on Friday, I went to the eye doctor and had my pupils dilated. So, you know, viewing all of these lights, filming with these lights wasn't really an option. So I decided to wait until Monday to talk about this, you know, let it kind of uh, marinate a little bit, if you will. But, you know, one thing that irritates me is that, you know, amid all of the pearl clutching, nobody in the media who talks about this is supplying people with the context that they need. Because right before Rashida Tlaib booed Hillary Clinton, we got this article from the New York Times where she attacks Bernie Sanders and his supporters once again. So as Shane Goldmacher reports, Hillary Clinton said on Friday in a podcast interview that Senator Bernie Sanders and his supporters did not do enough to unify the Democratic Party after the prolonged 2016 primary, calling the behavior of his supporters distressing and saying it affected the general election. All the way up until the end, a lot of people highly identified with his campaign were urging people to vote third party, urging people not to vote. Ms. Clinton said in an interview with Emily Tish Sussman for her podcast, Your Primary Playlist, it had an impact. Ms. Clinton also drew a sharp distinction between her efforts in 2008 to bring the party together after her bruising primary battle with Barack Obama and the efforts by Mr. Sanders in 2016. Night and day, she said. Okay, so first of all, um... It's not up to us or Bernie Sanders to unite the party. You were the nominee. So that was on you to unite the party. And I'm sorry that people weren't just like willingly wanting to embrace you with open arms after you just rigged the fucking primary against us. But that was on you. I mean, you could have selected Bernie Sanders as your VP. You could have selected anyone that was, you know, relatively left-leaning as your VP, but you chose Tim Kaine and assumed that the left would come out to vote for you. Now, I don't think that Bernie supporters is what cost Hillary Clinton the election, because more Bernie supporters supported Hillary in 2016 than Hillary supporters supported Obama in 2008, and we'll talk about that. But what happened was you lost because you didn't excite the base, because you were offering nothing to voters. And um, she has the nerve to say that, you know, there was this sharp distinction between her efforts to unite the party in 2008 and Bernie's efforts to do the same in 2016. Bernie did almost 40 rallies for you. What was it, 39, 40? You did half that for Obama. And on top of that, you did nothing to rein in your supporters who identified as Puma. Party unity, my ass. And in case you haven't seen some of these clips, the reasons why Hillary Clinton supporters didn't want to support Barack Obama and even said that they'd vote for McCain is because Hillary Clinton ran an explicitly racist campaign against Obama. Take a look at some of the things that they said. Why? Because they want to do what they want to do. And they think we won't turn and vote for McCain. Well, I got news for all of you. McCain will be the next president of the United States. We're back. We welcome to Larry King Live Elizabeth Joyce. She's in Denver, a member of Just Say No Deal. That's a coalition, a group of staunch Hillary Clinton backers who are not supporting Barack Obama. She's co-creator of, of HigherHeels.com, which described itself as a forum of power chicks for Hillary. Wide shot of that. Uh, tell me about it. Uh, Clinton's for McCain. Well, we're with a coalition called Just Say No Deal. We're, we have about three million people. We have about three million people. We have about three million people. Christy Adkins, I'm Clinton's for McCain. I'm an independent. And while some people may have an open mind and they feel comfortable voting for a man who went to a Madras Muslim school when he was younger, the Clinton's for McCain. He wears Republican red and says he's eager to support John McCain. I'm going to campaign for him, volunteer for him. <laughs> 
Let's take a closer look at Rajesh Rajakapalan's t-shirt and you'll see what's different about this picture. He's a Hillary Clinton supporter, now part of New York's Democrat for McCain. We have, we have on record with his name as a Muslim on his school record. When he got so I mean, Hillary Clinton is just downright shameless and everything she says, it's not surprising. Like whenever she speaks, all I see this is as a distraction, right? She just wants people to not really focus on the primary. She wants to, you know, turn the eyeballs to her because she loves attention and she wants us to, you know, relitigate 2016 because she's hoping that that will hurt Bernie Sanders. But understand, it's not going to hurt Bernie Sanders. It's going to help him, if anything, because overall, as much as, you know, you claim that people don't like Bernie Sanders, no, we don't like you. Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders is the most popular senator in America. You are highly disliked. So, I mean, just to give you that context, I mean, she said this on Friday, and then Rashida Tlaib booed Hillary Clinton, and yet nobody's talking about Hillary Clinton's divisive statements, but everyone is clutching their pearls because Rashida Tlaib dared to boo Queen Hillary. I mean, look at some of these examples here. You have former Clinton senior advisor Zach Petkanis saying the Sanders campaign needs to immediately condemn this shameful, destructive behavior. You have Clinton spokesperson Nick Merrill say, I can't imagine this kind of behavior is something Iowans want to see from candidates and their surrogates. And I don't imagine the vast majority of voters in Representative Tlaib's district, which Secretary Clinton won by over 60 points in 2016, want to see this either. Also, this is so toxic, and I almost feel like Barack Obama should speak out. I know he can't, but it's that bad. These women owe their careers to trailblazers like Hillary Clinton, who also defended them specifically against Trump's insults. I still can't believe how awful this is. You have Tom Watson saying, why is Representative Jayapal laughing at Hillary Clinton? You have Charlotte Clymer, who was a comms director for Hillary Clinton, saying, this is absolutely ridiculous and unbecoming. I don't know what the hell this is supposed to accomplish. You have journalist Soledad O'Brien say, you guys might need some of those Hillary voters later, in the general and in your own careers as legislators. Also, could our elected officials show some of the leadership qualities they always campaign on? This means all of you. Now, as all of these Democratic Party loyalists clutch their pearls and scold Rashida Tlaib, they said absolutely nothing about Hillary Clinton as she attacked Bernie Sanders and his supporters that very day. Like, this is asymmetric warfare. They want to be able to punch us, they want to be able to attack us, and when we respond, then we're the ones who are condemned, and nobody acknowledges that Hillary Clinton is the one that's being divisive, and she was attacking Bernie that day, but we can never respond. Like, do you understand the ridiculous double standard here? How is the media not calling this out? Normal people see this. Normal people see this, and it's why they don't trust the media, because they know that there's this agenda. There's this pro-establishment, pro-democratic party, elite bias, and whenever we say something that's deemed divisive, we're always scolded. But if Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama say something that's divisive, well, you know, it's it's great. It's amazing. Uh, as The View put it, I'm just glad that Hillary Clinton is speaking, you know, her mind now. I thought everyone wanted her to be authentic. No. If you're serious about defeating Donald Trump and you claimed that, you know, the primary being too, uh, too negative in 2016 was an issue, then shouldn't you be condemning Hillary Clinton's divisive remarks, which further divides the Democratic Party base? Because they will need to unify behind Bernie if he's the nominee. So Hillary Clinton, after all that he did for her, even after she rigged the primary against him, this is how she repays him. Now, Rashida Tlaib, decided to kind of semi-apologize here, which I, I wish that she wouldn't have done that because she did absolutely nothing wrong. But here's what she said. I am so incredibly in love with the movement that our campaign of Not Me Us has created. This makes me protective over it and frustrated by attempts to dismiss the strength and diversity of our movement. However, I know what is at stake if we don't unify over one candidate to be Trump, and I intend to do everything possible to ensure that Trump does not win in 2020. In this instance, I allowed my disappointment with Secretary Clinton's latest comments about Senator Sanders and his supporters get the best of me. You all, my sisters in service on stage, and our movement deserve better. I will continue to strive to come from a place of love and not react in the same way of those who are against what we are building in this country. This is about building a just and equitable future for my two boys and future generations. So, I mean, she didn't have to do that, but people called on her to apologize, and she basically kind of semi-apologized. Um, but has Hillary Clinton apologized? Like she said here, she was responding directly to Hillary Clinton's divisive remarks, but that's not allowed. And 
Nobody is calling on Hillary Clinton to apologize. It's just, it's so unbelievable. The hypocrisy of the Democratic of the Democratic Party establishment, it's almost like unbelievable. And it's not that, you know, I can't believe that they're hypocrites because that's obvious, but they're just so transparent. You'd think that they wouldn't be so conspicuous, like they try to hide their hypocrisy, but they're just wearing it on their sleeves. They're just openly, you know, flaunting the fact that there's a different set of standards that apply to us that don't apply to them. They can attack, they can be divisive, they can even attack the supporters of candidates. But if we respond, we're the bad guys. Even some rando on Twitter with like 15 followers, if that person responds in a negative way, that is a representation of Bernie's movement and he must immediately condemn it. In fact, he should just spend all of his time not campaigning and just condemning all of the meanness that is emanating from his campaign. No other candidate should do this, just Bernie Sanders. Why? Because they want him to lose. So, I mean, look, I don't have to tell you guys this. You already know. This is nothing but hypocrisy. The, the pearl clutching is fake. This is fake manufactured outrage. These people just don't want Bernie Sanders to win, and they know how powerful the, you know, support of Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and Pramila Jayapal is. That's why they're doing everything to defeat him. That's why they're calling on Barack Obama to speak out to condemn Bernie Sanders, because he's popular. Maybe that would hold some weight. They want us to to disarm. They want us to go away. But guess what? We're not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. And no matter how much they clutch their pearls and cry like babies, we are going to be a thorn in the side of their ass because what they did in 2016 was unforgivable. They rigged the primary against us and ended up losing to Donald Trump. So now guess what? All of you elites who worked for Hillary Clinton can do step aside and allow us to clean up the mess that you made. You are the reason why Donald Trump is the president. You are the reason why the Supreme Court is on the cusp of going conservative even more for decades to come. So if you truly are serious about wanting to get Trump out of office, shut up. Do what you can to unify the party as people like Rashida Tlaib are trying to do. Call on Hillary Clinton to apologize. Stop being so fucking hypocritical. I mean, it's just, it's insufferable. You all are insufferable. Join the Republican Party because guess what? If Bernie Sanders is the nominee, he will transform the Democratic Party. So you're going to have to make a choice. Are you actually going to, um, you know, support the nominee to defeat Donald Trump? Are you going to side with Republicans? Because economically speaking, you already agree with them more so than us. So make a decision. Either you're with us or you're against us. But all of this faux outrage, it's not helping you. It's only hurting your cause and making us stronger because I think that normal people see through it. They see the bullshit. They see, you know, this phony outrage and they're just, they're sick of it. This is why Bernie Sanders is rising. This is why he's surging. This is why he's the most popular politician in America because he just cares about substance not respectability and civility politics.